More eye drops have been found that contain dangerous microbes that can cause serious ocular complications. You may remember back earlier in 2023 when Care artificial tears were recalled from the market due to containing the Pseudomonas bacteria, which led to vision loss, enucleation, which is the removal of the eye, and even death in a few cases. Now, since then, the FDA has been cracking down and investigating the safety of other eye drops that are out there on the market, and they have found and recalled two eye drops. One is Dr. Burns MSN eye drops 5% solution that was found to contain bacillus species of bacteria and exophyalla fungus. The second is Light Eyes MSN eye drops eye repair that was found to contain four species of bacteria, Pseudomonas mycobacterium, mycolysibacterium, and methylorubrum. Dr. Burns voluntarily recalled the eye drops in question along with all of the other drops that were available. And when you go to the website to shop, there's a pop-up with a warning regarding the recall and you're not able to view the eye drops to purchase. Light Eyes, as of the recording date of August 27th, 2023, has the drop in question marked as sold out on their website. Now, I hope this is their way of saying you cannot purchase this drop uh, and that it's not just sold out because of popularity, uh, but they do not have a statement that appears on the website warning of the dangers of the drops that they were selling. All eye drops that you use should be sterile. And if there are any microbes present, it puts you at risk for ocular infection. Now, just like our skin protects our body from infection, our eyes have an outer epithelial layer that protects it from infection as well. But if there's any sort of damage to the ocular surface, that gives these microbes an opportunity to get in there and cause horrible effects, crazy infections. Severe dry eye is actually one of the things that causes an irregular ocular surface, damage to the surface, that may make these microbes more able to proliferate and cause serious damage to the eyes. Now at this point, there's not information out there on how these eye drop bottles became contaminated with these microbes. Earlier in the year with the Ezracare artificial tear, they came to find that the issue was the eye drop was being sold without preservatives in a bottle that you use day after day, which gives opportunity for bacteria to get inside the bottle and grow. In this particular case, it's hard to say where the contamination came from, and I certainly don't want to speculate in that regard. I did try to look up what the ingredients of the eye drops were to see if they did have preservative in them, and it's very difficult to read the images that I was able to find online from other news sources about the Dr. Burns eye drops. After initial recording, I found the ingredients list for the light eyes drop. It appears that what they consider the preservative for their drop is organic amticide coconut, which is designed to be used with other antimicrobials, which from this list, it does not appear are present. I'll be interested to find out more as they come out with more information and be sure to subscribe and stay tuned because I will be doing updates as more news comes out. Now, especially if you've been using these recalled eye drops, it's important to know what the symptoms are of an ocular infection. These would be pain, light sensitivity, redness, discharge, tearing, foreign body sensation, blurry vision. Now, in the case of fungal infections, sometimes there's little or no pain, so pay attention to those other symptoms. Now, in the case of Pseudomonas, it is highly resistant to different types of antibiotics and it works very quickly and can even melt through the cornea in less than 24 hours, giving it access to the internal structures of the eye. And these are very serious eye conditions. So it's important to call your doctor and head in there right away if you have any of these symptoms. Fortunately, an FDA article states that there have not been any known adverse reactions to the recalled eye drops as of August 22nd. However, if you develop any of those symptoms that I mentioned, be sure to see your eye care provider immediately. And it is always helpful to bring in the eye dropper because in some places they can culture that along with the infection and see what bacterium or fungus is causing that infection. 
And after that, the FDA has recommended that everyone discard either of the bottles that have been recalled so they will not be used in the future. If you do happen to get an ocular bacterial infection, there are a whole range of treatments available depending on the severity of the infection and the location. And these could range from topical, oral, or IV antibiotics. It could range from dilation drops or oral pain medication for pain control. Topical steroids may be used once the infection is under control to try to reduce scarring. An eye shield may be prescribed. Hospital admission may be necessary, and sometimes, unfortunately, enucleation or removal of the eye. Ocular fungal infections can be treated with topical antifungals, oral antifungals, antifungals injected into the stroma of the eye, which is the middle layer of the cornea. Dilation drops are used to help control pain. An eye shield can be used as protection. Sometimes hospital admission is necessary and often antifungal eye drops need to be used for four to six weeks. Now, sometimes enucleation may be necessary if the infection is severe. Now, the FDA did mention that both of these eye drops contain as their active ingredient MSM, which is methyl sulfonyl methane. So what's the big deal there? Well, these drugs are unapproved and are being illegally marketed in the United States. Now, the FDA isn't necessarily pointing out that MSM is the source of the contamination, but that it is problematic in that it has not been approved for topical use. MSM has become a popular dietary supplement because it has been found to have anti-inflammatory properties and help with soreness after exercise and possibly be promising to the future of cancer research, among many other things. Topical use of MSM was found to cause mild skin and eye irritation. So not really sure why you would wanna put that directly on the eyes. I certainly don't want to speculate about what the source of the contaminants were, so I'm looking forward to more information from the FDA and epidemiologists to tell us what their findings were, and I'm glad they're out there continuing to look into other eye drops to make sure that they are safe and get this information out to the public. So be sure to subscribe and check in as I will be giving updates as more information comes along. So I can imagine this leaving you worried and wondering whether the eye drops you're using are safe. I can say I certainly feel more at ease knowing that the FDA is actively looking into the safety of other eye drops and checking for microbes and getting this information out there. I would certainly recommend avoiding online marketplaces. It is hard to know what has been approved and what has not, what is safe and what isn't, and exactly where your eye drops come from. The best source to ask is your eye care provider and ask them for specific names of specific drops that they would recommend. And they can share with you their best recommendations depending on your particular condition. It's also worth noting that if you are using any eye drop that is marketed as preservative free, make sure that it is in one of those little vials that's a single use vial thrown away afterwards or that it's in a special bottle that has a flat top because these are specially designed to not let back in any drops that have already been exposed to the outside world and that makes them safe to be preservative free. If it's a typical eye drop with a typical pointy tip to it, this should always have preservative to prevent any microbes from getting within that bottle and growing prior to you instilling that drop into your eye. Stay educated, stay safe, and discard any recalled eye drops. Be sure to look out for symptoms and call your doctor if you have any concerns. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.